Which aspect of married life makes you want to stay single? Story one. I love my wife. She's complimentary to me in a lot of ways and was the first person who I met that made me feel like I could be myself. She also hogs the covers, leaves lights on, and can't seem to close any drawers she opens. ETA spelling. Story two. When my wife sits down in the living room, sees what I'm watching and says, can't we watch something we both want to watch? This means she wants me to put on Friends on Netflix for the millionth time so she can ignore it and stare at her phone. She does not like when I point out that she can stare at her phone while I'm watching what I want to watch. Story 3. Nothing. I love it. If I had to pick the absolute worst thing, it would be she wants to tag along when I need to go somewhere just to pick up a couple things for a project. And a 10-minute trip turns into an hour because she starts looking around when I want to be in and out. Story 4. I'm pretty minimal when it comes to possessions. I don't like to have a lot of stuff that I have to organize and keep track of. Being married, though, and having kids, means having to live in a house with so much stuff. I also think it's a lot easier to manage money by myself as I can get by on relatively little. Story 5. After people get married, they stop doing the things that made them attractive in the first place. Singing little songs while she works, looking up fun places to visit or things to try. Like it's day and night difference between married couples that still try to keep the romance alive and the ones that just said, fuck it. They won't divorce me. Treat your married so like you were still dating. Stay in shape. Keep that curiosity. Keep trying to impress and show affection. Story 6. Loosing hobbies or interests because your spouse does not like them. See so many people stop doing things they used to love because their spouse does not like or has not interest in. My friend used to like action movies. His now wife does not. Time and time again, I have witnessed him say, I want to watch that new action movie. And she goes, no, we are not watching that. Sometimes I wonder why people get married when they have basically nothing in common. Story 7. Having to run things by someone else, even if they are small and only impact me, and having to hear opinions about the behavioral changes I decide to make. Like, if I decide I want to limit my red meat consumption as a single person, I can just do it without having to justify it. I don't have to endure someone's argument about how that is unnecessary or unhealthy or burdensome. And if I later decide to change my mind, I don't have to listen to someone's told you so. As a single person, I am free to be as dynamic as I want to be. I can ditch a lifestyle and adopt another without worrying about someone's feelings. Story 8. The complexity. If I was single, I would have an efficiency apartment in the ghetto with minimal furniture and a mini fridge. I'd go to work and go home, maybe link up with family every few weeks, but that's about it. I wouldn't give up anything about my life with my partner, but sometimes it feels like it might be nice for things to just be simpler. Story 9 depends on who I'm married to. It seems a lot of people marry someone with the intention of starting a family, but more or less just found someone they can tolerate enough to have that. I, on the other hand, would only marry someone I really loved and liked being around slash spending time with. If I don't find that then, I wouldn't get married. Story 10, my ex is still one of my best friends. We split up 15 years ago because I didn't want kids or marriage, but she did. Now she is married with two kids and is always moaning how hard her life is and she should have stayed with me and had an easy life. I will send her some pictures of me on vacation next month just to mess with her. Story 11. I don't want to be single, but sometimes I want to just be in a sad, bad, quiet mood for a while without my significant other thinking. It's because of them. You know when you just want to sit with some selfish, childish, miserable thoughts on your own for a while until they pass, but you're pressured to share them, then you feel mean, bitchy, and pathetic. Story 12. Getting caught up in relationship issues, while in reality it doesn't even matter. X. You get into a disagreement with your spouse about which way to load the dishwasher. Things escalate. You're now sleeping on the couch and didn't get much sleep that night. You have to go to work feeling like a sack of shit. You then have to come back to said argument the next day, rehash things, try to smooth things over, take the time and effort to do all that. So you're spending all this time and effort over just utter bullshit. This is what is taking your mental energy and time. This is your focus in life right now. This is your world right now. Meanwhile, if you were single, you wouldn't be dealing with this kind of crap. And really, it's just utter bullshit at the end of the day. You would be just going about your day focusing on real issues not just made-up crap between you and your partner. Really, really makes me want to keep staying single. Story 13. TBH, I think the bigger change was going from a childless married couple to new parents. That's a loss of solitude at a level that I can't fairly compare to anything else, including going from single life to married life. Do I miss some aspects of being alone in my apartment when I was single? Sure, but the house is big enough. I love my spouse, and we survived a pandemic together in a tiny condo. As a new parent, though, I miss being able to do what I wanted for an entire Saturday afternoon without having any boundaries of activities, expectations of time frame to return, 
exchange of timeshare bargaining for a later time, or drawing some social debt to repay for babysitting coverage. Making time for myself as a new parent is like a debit credit system of my time. If I want to do anything, I have to draw credit from my spouse and or the grandparents and repay said favor at a later time. There is no my time. It's Nuni's fault either. Not my kids, not my spouses, not anybody's. It's just the sacrifice of self that came with becoming a parent. Story 14. A lot of these comments could be resolved with good communication. Not complaining or passive aggressiveness, but a good mature adult conversation. Stop suppressing your feelings, gents, and just talk to your wives. I know this because I used to do this a lot. Story 15. I had a very long and detailed response to this. However, I will keep it short instead. The aspect that makes me want to remain single is that no matter how amazing the marriage is and was, a person will change. And unfortunately, that change can easily become an incompatibility, a relationship-killing incompatibility. This is coming from two XX such divorces. I shall not be allowing myself to be placed in that situation ever again. Story 16. Uneven household chore distribution. The home I was raised in, no one had assigned chores. If the sink had dishes in it, you just grabbed a sponge and got to work. My brothers and sisters all had a mutual understanding with unspoken rules. My wife came from a family that screamed and fought over who had to do what with the ultimate goal of doing nothing at all. It took five years for her to do housework without explicitly being asked or fight about it. Story 17. Never being able to only worry about me. Everything is about us, ours. What are we having for dinner? What can we do with our money knowing that every expense and cost is basically doubled because we are doing it? I love my wife with all my heart, and I do not want to be without them, and I miss them when they're gone. But I'd be lying if I said a small part of me gets a sigh of relief whenever they go on a trip or watch their parents' place for the week, because it means I only have to worry about myself and what I want for that time. Story 8. 1. People change. Legal bindings stay the same. 2. It is my firm belief that a probably startling majority of people on this planet just do not have the proper psychological and or emotional mechanisms in place to have healthy, long-lasting relationships with other people. It takes self-awareness, theory of mind, humility, hard work, empathy, and many other things, and people are just fucking lacking, dude, lacking. L-A-C-K-I-N-G in the emotional and psychological departments in their brains. Sometimes this is obvious in your partner or potential partner. Sometimes this takes years to find out. That's scary. Some people are okay with all that, or they don't mind having relationships where they argue all the time, or have weird, insecure issues hanging over their heads all the time, or have mismatching and stressed love lives, or constant communication problems. I can't settle with that. I'm not cool with it. I'm not settling for a toxic relationship. I'd rather be single. Three, I have zero interest in anything but a serious relationship, but finding the right person, it's exhausting. Oh, four, I do not want drama. I don't want my holidays a time of joy and celebration, to turn into some fucking chore where I got to show face with and put up with in-laws and shit. I'm not getting involved with anyone whose family doesn't jive with my own. Finding a person who checks off all these things on my list just seems like an unlikely task. I've tried a handful of times, had something real a couple times. Shit just doesn't work out. People change, or just as worse, show you who they really are. Story 19. Having to live up to someone else's expectations as well as your own. I'm struggling with stuff. Was before we got married, but now it's out there in the open. It affects another person. I don't even live up my own expectations. He gets upset and frustrated when I don't complete my side of the housework. I'm already upset with myself. I work full time and when I'm having a bad day because of my issues, I can't come home and clean. It piles up. Anything that affects me affects him. Anything bad that happens to me affects him. Anytime I fuck up, it's not just me who's dealing with the consequences now. If I were to wait until I were a fixed and stable person, I'd never get married. I also need to clarify I did warn him thoroughly of a my issues before we got married. I will also clarify I'm working very hard on myself and have made measurable improvements. Story 20. I have no closet space, like zero. She's taken it all. She says she'll make room for my shirts, but they just get crammed in the back. We have a wall closet and a small walk-in closet in our bedroom. She's filled them both. I'm over it now. I adapted. I hang my shirts on my dresser in a combination of a laundry basket and the floor for the rest. Story 21. I am probably the asshole. I married my wife, my high school sweetheart, because she's amazing. Loves going out, always finds time for me, but stays independent and has a stable job. Lots of other reason to, I do love her. We get married after six years of knowing each other and finally get a place of our own. Even have a couple of kids. Thing is, and why I'm probably an asshole. She's never grown up past the point I met her. 
I've changed jobs seven times trying to get a better pay and stable hours, and she's just doing the same minimum wage job she started on leaving school. We constantly talk about the condition the house is in and both agree to what's each other jobs at home. Kitchen is my job and it's clean every day, but I come home and fall over toys, etc. as it's 23 at night with nothing done, including three sides and a sink full of washing up, but that's my job, so I get on with it. So what? Well, I'm autistic. Changing jobs is hard for me, let alone any that pays well. She's normal. At least that is what she holds to and refuses point blank to even try to use her qualifications. We could be on so much more if she used them. We talk about the house and next day it's tidy. Turns out mother-in-law comes over and spends four eight saws cleaning house. Wife did shit, all besides make tea that's standing my clean kitchen FFS. Nothing I do can persuade her to want any change. I have tried being nice, have tried a star chart FFS, and even told her point blankly I think she's autistic like me, and told her how much a diagnosis would help her understand her actions. What does she do to any of this? Nothing, nothing at all. The next day is is the same routine as if I had not poured my heart out crying for her to do anything besides the same routine she has done for 15 fucking years. Story 22. I was single most of my adult life. I finally got married because I never settled. I met the one woman who completely understood me. Nothing. Having been mostly single my entire adult life, my wife is a treasure. When I'm sick, she cares for me. When I'm tired, she helps. When I'm hungry, she hooks me up with something to eat. When I'm sweaty and dirty from doing something around the house, she hugs me without hesitation. When I am gaming, she'll make me wings. When I'm tired, she lets me sleep, and she listens to me when I have something to say, whether it's a stupid joke or a vent about work. Every day I have someone who looks after me and deeply cares about my well-being. There's nothing in single life that even comes close to the giving spirit of a loving partner. Nothing. Story 23. So my bestie Sarah got hitched a few years back, right? And it's like, ever since then, I've been seeing this weird transformation. Remember how she used to be all about her painting and would jet off to art shows at the drop of a hat? Now it's all, oh, I gotta check with Mike first, this, and Mike doesn't like it when I'm out late, that. Last month, we were supposed to hit this amazing gallery opening, something she'd normally be all over. But nope, Mike had plans for them, watching her slowly shrink like that. It just makes me want to hold on to my single life with both hands, you know? I mean... Who needs that drama? Story 24. Having been married before, what I really don't look forward to about the prospect of doing it again is how much of a fucking ordeal it was to undo. And I had a damn near golden divorce. No alimony, no kids, no real drama, not even lengthy discussions about who gets what. I shudder to think about what someone with all of that involved would have to endure. I'm not against being married again, and with my current partner, I like to think it's a real possibility, provided she agrees to a prenup. Story 25. The entire concept of having to compromise over everything every day forever. Like I just want to come home and chill. It's exhausting having to be out in the world and constantly be worrying about other people's needs and feelings and wants. I can't imagine coming home and still having to do that. I can't imagine not having hours every day when I don't have to talk to a soul and nobody asks anything of me. Not being able to set a thing down and it be there when you come back. Having to justify to someone when I want the house 60 degrees and me wearing a hoodie in August. Story 26. I'm married. I love being married. Love my family. But I hate the amount of autonomy I don't have. My spouse was out of town for work the other night. Kids in bed, and I had the best alone time. Was able to do yoga, eat snacks, draw, watch whatever I wanted on TV without the constant awareness that I may be interrupted at any moment. I miss true alone time. Story 27. All of it. Sharing finances. Putting up with shitty family members, inheriting debt, additional stress, someone expecting you're to be physically and emotionally available at all times, being expected to be perky after your dog ass tired from working, arguing about how to decorate the house, having to compromise your entire existence for another person. Never. Story 28. The fact that I'm getting close to 40 and the vast majority of marriages I have encountered throughout my life have seemed toxic and unhappy. Even the ones that don't seem that bad have never made me feel like it's something I need. I'm still not completely opposed. If I met the right person, cool, and if I don't, that's also cool. Story 29. I'm not single, but I miss his personal space to just be alone and it not being an issue. Being selfish and being okay with that. Doing the secret single behavior stuff I did before without being interrupted. Going to the bathroom without being anxious about the smell. Taking a shower alone. Sleeping in until 12 on the weekends. Not making my bed and just leaving it. Having to do everyone's laundry. Most of the cooking. Feeling alone while being in a relationship is pretty common too. Story 30. Let me start by saying I adore my husband. I never thought I'd want to be married again after my first one ended so dramatically. I enjoy the time I spend with him, more so lately since he's been working so much. 
That being said, I savor the times he has to go out of town for work. I can clean the house, and it stays that way for an entire week. I can sleep in late, be a lazy bum, and binge a whole season of the new Netflix show I've been eyeing. And I don't have someone nudging me to get up and out of the house because when he's not gaming or working outside, he's so bored. I can sit and read my book for hours in total silence, uninterrupted. As an introvert, I need these days so that I don't lose my cool when he's home. Story 31. All of it. The power dynamics. The slow, secret resentment of the other person for limiting your freedom. The lack of alone time and personal space. The laziness after marriage in terms of keeping romance alive. Plus, the ceremonies can end up being a huge waste of money. In my mind, shit begins to go awry when you become chained to a person by law. I'm not talking about monogamy. I wouldn't mind being in a monogamous relationship for the rest of my life. But a legal binding agreement to another person can cause everything in an otherwise happy relationship to go south. I've seen all this play out with basically my entire family. Always ends in either a nasty divorce or a lifelong abusive relationship. Why would I subject myself to any of that? Story 32. Having to have consensus and planning for big life decisions. In the past, when I wanted to up and move, I would. I'd get a new job in my new city-state, and that was that. Husband insists on owning a house, so there's that plus agreeing on where to live or even moving at all. Same with big purchases or vacations. Story 33. The simplest answer I can give is the cost of coordination. Everything becomes a discussion. Even when short and sweet, you still have to talk about it. What's for dinner? What time? Who is driving? What should we have? What are we watching tonight? When is our next date night? Who is watching the baby? When you are single, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want and it's managed as an internal dialogue, if any. Story 34. Not something specific to everyone who's married, but having kids has added a lot of stress. Maintaining a job, keeping up with the little ones, house chores, social activities, including with the spouse, and then somehow finding time for yourself is pretty much impossible to do all the time. As someone who is introverted, I found that it is really, really hard to enjoy the marriage when 95% plus of my time is spent with other people. Yes, I get alone time, but it's never enough. Story 35. Not married, but in a long-term committed relationship. I do sometimes miss the freedom of being able to do not do whatever I wanted. If I wanted to lay around the house in my underwear drinking beer and playing video games all day, I could. If I wanted to let the laundry wait a few more days, I could. If I wanted to wake up at 6 a.m. and go for a run, I could. I mean, I still can do all those things, but I also have to take into account my SO's feelings. Like I may want to lay around boozing and gaming today, but she may have friends coming over. I may want to go for a run at 6 a.m., but my alarm would wake her up way early than she wants to. I'm fine with the trade-off in general, but anyone who says there aren't times they miss the freedom of being single is lying. This also doesn't mean they want to break it off and be single again. It's just waxing nostalgically. Story 36. Doing everything for them because they don't seem to want to do themselves. Making all the decisions. Not agreeing on things. Them not understanding me to include how my brain operate due to trauma. Honestly, the don't seem to have ambition and they are depressed. I've tried and tried to get them to go to therapy and they won't go. It finally blew up when we lost our apartment a few weeks ago and they asked if I wanted them to leave and I said yes. I'm just tired. I just finished school, working full time and still have more school to attend. I won't be able to cook, clean, do homework, wait care of the animals, work and attend class while taking care of them. I'd rather be single and alone than be married. Now I am also bad at communicating my feelings. I won't even yell. I thought I was being patient and supportive and allowing them to figure things out in their own time, but I didn't realize I became dead inside. I just don't feel anything. Looking at marriage counseling, but I really don't know if it's going to work. Story 37. I'm married with two kids, a cat, and a dog. I visited my single, childless, petless friend that lives alone. We went camping for three days, went back to his house, and nothing had changed or moved. It was like we never left, like the house was just paused. I can't put a cup down next to me at the table without someone or some animal moving it or placing something near it. The house is in constant flux. Also, we just left to do things like no goodbyes, no checking in, no permissions, no checking food bowls, nothing. We just decided to get food and went to get food. When we came back, there was no making sure to be quiet because a kid was asleep, no letting the dog out, etc., I'm not jealous, just amazed. That might appeal to some people. Story 38. Growing old, raising kids, grandkids, and your partner getting sick and dying. That thought absolutely terrifies me. I love him so much and I love our children so deeply. The disagreements taught us what was and wasn't important to us. The misunderstandings taught us to better communicate. In the end, it made us so much stronger, made the bond more unbreakable. 
So knowing one day the one I love who helped me create the ones we love will no longer be in my life absolutely devastates me. End story 39. I was married to a man who did nothing around the house. It did not dawn on me to hire house cleaners. I was exhausted and resentful, and all he did was pick on me for not dressing up like Christina Applegate in Married with Children and not enthusiastically fucking him on request. I would be sick and he'd shrug and go to a party. He wound up leaving because I didn't make him happy. I swore I'd never let someone hate me that much ever again. He's on his fourth wife now. Good luck to her. I understand that his second one was so exhausted from taking care of that baby man that she threw him out and wound up having to take anger management classes under court order. Story 40. The answer for this for any happily married person is likely to be in-laws every time. My wife loves her family, but they are dysfunctional AIF. My wife, totally unbiased opinion here, is hands down the most well-adjusted of them, and she's the furthest from any of them. But she loves them and wishes they loved her back the way she loves and thinks of them. It would be devastating to my wife if anything, God forbid, ever happened to them, but at least it would put an end to their childish nonsense that doesn't seemingly cause them any pain, but pains my wife. My wife and I occasionally joke about what'll happen if the other dies first. She knows, though, that I'm not joking when I say if she goes first, I'm sure the funeral will be the last time any of them are ever able to look me in the eye ever again, because I'm going to be unrestrained at that point.